know what I'm saying? And um, I can't, I couldn't afford the, you know, brownstones and and bets are, you know, anywhere from 1.8 to 2.5 million dollars. If I had to like I still can. average uh, that, maybe I can, but <laughs> it's like I don't want to try to afford it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, yeah, it. Ex- that's that's absolutely correct. <laughs> so you know, for me, it was just like okay, I always had this portion in my mind, even as a, as a small child, that I was going to move somewhere that I could afford a house. Um, and mm-hmm. that was only further exacerbated by the pandemic where I was in an apartment, 689 square feet for two ish years. Um, and mm-hmm. that was just difficult, <laughs> like all the way. Um, and I think that's why I, I alluded to the, the mental health piece of it earlier, because you don't realize how, how few or how small your place is when you are there the whole time. You know, in New York, you, you know, you go to work, you're at work for at least eight hours. You might go get a drink after work. So that, that ends up being anywhere from two to three hours. So you look up and you've been out of the house somewhere from 11 to 12 hours and you come home eight hours of it is sleep. So it doesn't really dawn on you that you're in this very small space because you don't spend that much time there. Um, at least not awake. So, um, so yeah, moving here, it was like, let's, let's, let's get a house. Right. So I was living in an apartment and she was just kind of like, you know what, it would be great to take a look at the market, just see what we could find. I was like, you know what? Great. That's smart. Cause I, I, that was my plan when I came down here anyway. So went to take a look, and we probably looked at like 15 different houses, but the first house we went to look at had a, a realtor associated to the property. Um, so we didn't have one going in. Um, and my realtor is, was, hey man, I mean, yeah, I, I'm sorry to be disruptive with this thought, but I'm not yeah. going to let you keep doing this because it is a, it's a cultural topic that people talk about. Is it realtor yeah. or realtor? You're saying realtor, <laughs> Re- realtor, realtor. Uh, I don't know. Realtor. Is it real? Pam. 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 <laughs> Pam. Pam. Situation. Okay. It's and I'm sorry this was disrupting it, but it's, I believe it's realtor. Let's say. <laughs> realtor. Excuse me. So, yes, yes sure. Realtor. It is real. I'll realty. send you the clip of why that's funny. <laughs> All good. Um, who's pissed at me Realtor is this <laughs> black woman. What'd you say? You said Stu's pissed at me now, y'all. Go ahead. <laughs> realtor. <laughs> Make sure I get that right. I mean, accountability. This, this is what we do all day. Um, so my realtor is this black woman. Um, fantastic. Her name is Sean Ware. Um, she was associated to that first listing and, and we loved her as soon as we met her. And she was just like, you know, you all are beautiful. I want to help you and go on this journey with you um, of home buying. And um, I think from that first from that first property, we probably went and saw probably close to 10 to 12 different places um, in different parts of Atlanta, some in Camp Creek, some in Decatur, some some in, in various different places, a lot of south and a lot of east because my partner goes to Emory, so I need her to be close to school. Um, so, yeah, that was the process that, we, that got us started, and ultimately, you know, we – settled on a place we saw a lot of places <laughs> it felt like we were seeing a lot of places um and this is this is in the summer months so this was like july august time um when we were la- of, of 2022 yeah one quick note for the fans out there Stu's partner going to emory Stu is not a middle-aged man dating a college student in in like undergrad this is a, an advanced degree oh yeah no, so right. just she's, wanted yes. to she's, wanted she's, to she's put that a, out there for folks public help, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks for clarifying just wanted to, to set the stage for those who don't know us uh, so uh related to you said a lot of things that resonated there but as i think about the black realtor aspect that's one thing that we share in our processes and we share some things but our our process was pretty different in how we approached it yeah and i will say having black service providers it just it does something man it it just changes it puts you in a level of familiarity and i'm i'm so blessed to have had a black realtor and specifically someone who who was already a friend as well so that's important right that's where we differ yeah yeah, it's a very vulnerable process as well. I mean, you're bearing all of your financial information. You're trying to find alignment. You are constantly checked with reality and your idea of what you have for yourself, but what what's fiscally responsible and all of those things. It's a lot in the process. And to have someone that feels like a friend or that makes you feel, as we talked about before, security and safety is so important. So to yeah. have that psychological safety in the process and not feel like you're just a number, you said that person grounded y'all and you're beautiful, right? Y'all are beautiful and I want to yeah. help you. I felt yep. that just to the black service provider thing. I felt that before most recently in my PCP. So I have a black PCP and 
uh, Dr. Brown and Dr. Brown, when she first met me, she was just so, so familiar in the conversation. It was, how yeah. you doing? How, where your mom and them live? They doing all right out there? I was like, you don't know my parents, but it was, it just yeah. felt so good that she in yeah. that way. And I was like, you know what? You feel like someone that I, I'll tell you how they're doing because I just feel this rapport with you instantly. And 